All right, welcome back. So today on the go, we have Monster Prom because I figured Valentine's Day, why not do something and play this? So I got the, I am revisiting this game as well. I got the game back in like 2019. I went through, tried to get, get Miranda and Damien, and that fell through because they're very tricky. So let's dive in and try to romance someone else, shall we? Mm. Voice effects. Let's go. Now I don't remember which player characters I haven't used. It's just me. Uh. Hmm. Let's go classic, it's been a while. Full game. Ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid, sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Hmm. You know what, I'll be him. I don't think I've been him yet. I'm gonna call him what I usually go by in games, which is Keith. Yeah. And we had yet to experience this ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly, six weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the atten attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Huzzah! Miranda Vanderbilt, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. I tried one day. One day. Damien LaVey, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Again, one day. Those two are brats. <laughs> Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam DeLioncourt, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. I think I might go after Liam this time. Yay! Polly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? And Vera Oberlin, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. Yeah, I might try Liam. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had six weeks to choose our prom day, and even more daunting, we only had six weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Because I was thinking about who I was going to go after for this, and I think I will go after Liam. Try someone different. Welcome to Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullcrap to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. What is your soul emoji? The emoji that speaks the truth of your soul. Octopus emoji, best animal on earth. I know five mixed drinks, three drug cocktails, and 17 sex positions that involve one or several octopi. That's a poly thing, isn't it? Snowman, because that mother effer is in the middle of a blizzard and he's smiling. He doesn't give a F about blizzards and he has a bright hat. Sorry, I don't, I'm not the type to swear, that's just me. Caucasian guy with a turban because screw stereotypes. Hmm. Uh, I'll go with Snowman. Old Kratom and Fun. Which is the coolest mythological creature? A sphinx who's super turned up and ready to party and she wraps all her riddles. She still kills you if you don't answer them correctly, but she wraps the riddles. This weird creature I drew when I was six, and which is clearly super derivative from other mythological creatures, but super cool and some IOC, my spirit animal, okay? The invisible hand of the free market. Mm -hmm. I'll go with this one, I think. Creative fun and wealthy. 
world will end tomorrow. What will you do today? 100 push-ups? No, no, 200 push-ups. Oh god, kill me. They always tell you the world is ending. I'll profit on other people's hysteria. Nobody ends the world but me. I'll end the world today. I always party as if there were no tomorrow, so who cares? I'll finish my novel. Whoever comes after the end should know my legacy. It's okay, we invented the apocalypse to take care of the overpopulation of commoners. Yep, I knew it. I think I know what to do for him, so we'll see. Um, All right. Sure. Um, sure. All right. Library. Because I think we need smarts. That day you spent some time on the library, P library's PCs, playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? This time it paid off, so screw it. You gain plus two money. You're born and doodling your notebook when Damien suddenly appears. What the F is this doodle? Is that me? You wish it were you. Am I cuddling shirtless with Liam? Can I be part of that pile? What? Loser. Dude, if you were looking for a shortcut to the morgue, this is your lucky day. Give me one good reason not to cuddle your face with my fist. Oh no, they discover your erotic fan art of them. You can't think of any way to calm down the both of them. Maybe the right answer can calm down one of them. What the F is this? <laughs> this F for D or Damien is R. I present to you, Yowie. Oh, don't hurt his little brain. Don't be silly. You don't want to fight me. You're clearly fighting against your urge for cuddling. Hmm. I feel like I'm gonna screw this up. Uh. Cuddling. Hmm. I'm gonna try the bottom one, but I'm not 100% sure. Then you start tickling Damien. Okay, that's it. In the end, it seemed he actually did want to fight you, and so he did. Darn it! You need to check your people skills, it'll still be your ribs, which are probably broken. You lose minus one bullet, that's one charm. <sighs> Is this just gonna be the thing where even if I try to go after someone else, I'm just gonna be thrown at Damien? Huh. <sighs> No chance of Damien here, thank god. You take your seat beside arguably the two coolest monsters in all of Spooky High. Here's hoping you can keep up with them. Vera, are you eating manticore steaks again? Yes, and it's delicious. Don't you know the amount of cruelty involved in the mainstream meat production industry? Yes, and it's delicious. Besides, Liam, you're a vampire. Don't you only consume things that are dead? Well, yes, I suppose, but it's always ethically sourced, organic, free range, and human. The human population has a good is out of control, and eating them is the most environmental, mentally responsible thing to do. Listen, Liam, I'm happy to have a personal feud with every single animal I eat. I make sure to meet all of them first and ensure I'm devouring only the ones I hate the most. It makes it extra tasty. Well then, surely you can in inflict such pain without going through the cruel meat industry and supporting factory farming. Isn't home cruelty better anyway? You may actually have a point there, and if I get my hand in the pot, I can inflict even more effective and specific pain. And I bet there's a way to make money off this, too. Hang on, somehow I've ended up arguing against my own interests here. Liam, do you want to find innovative and creative ways to move si society forward, or do you want to oppose cruelty like every other weak mainstream loser? You can actually hear Liam's brain shaking as he struggles between his desire to be perceived as ethical and his desire to be perceived as creative. Maybe you can step in and help out. Okay. The animals you kill may lose their lives, but what about their afterlives? Instead of letting their spirits go to waste as a byproduct of the meat industry, let's serve their eternal souls as a side dish. Liam, animals are already suffering from ignorance. If Vera wanted to increase their pain, the best we can do is teach them the concept of death so they really fear their fate. Let's educate cattle on metaphysics. Mmm. -hmm. He's tr he feels tricky to me. These animals you kill my lizards. Spirit I just I'm gonna go bottom again. There we go! Well I can't condone animal cruelty, but I wholeheartedly support animal education. I do like animals, but their illiteracy is my fourth least favorite thing about them. Right between their poor taste in fashion and simplistic views on German cinema. It's not the worst idea you've ever had. Although, face it, Katie, you are known for having pretty terrible ideas about 50% of the time. 
You know what? She's right. <laughs> I don't really see building an empire out of private schools for cattle, but with my business acumen, I guess it's possible. And I can rest secure in the knowledge that I'm solving the bovine education crisis. Helping Liam help cows is like helping you help Liam choose you to go to prom with. Or something. Thank you, narrator. Dun, dun, dun. Um, uh. sure. Um, sure. Library again. Although we need charm, don't we? That day you spent some time on the- or no. Oh yeah, that's how you get money. That day you spent some time on the library's PC is managing your start kicker. You see lots of people with the sensationalist video and impossible promises nice. You gain plus uh, 100,000 money, but almost everything goes to cover costs and keep only two money. You know, Damien and Liam are you know, arguing as intensely or as they are stupidly. You're not unique. I'm <laughs> unique. Oh, I want to make out with you. <laughs> Sorry, I have a um, ring off of one of my notebooks that I've been playing with all day. Hi, you wish I'm unique like a snowflake made of flash frozen tears. Well, I'm unique like a snowflake made of flash frozen F you. Oh, honey, you're not smart, but you are hot. I'll give you that. I'm so unique, I eat garlic with every meal. <laughs> Big deal. I'm so unique, I've got a tattoo of the baby Jesus. <laughs> oh, Damien. You're so stupid. Yawn, I'm so unique, I let my victims suck my blood. Weak, I'm so unique, I go to church every Sunday. Huh. Hey, I do that too if I wasn't allergic. Would not. Would too. What a noob. Bite me, Alu turd. <laughs> oh, he's so dumb. Don't tip me, my fist of fit loser. This could go on forever, and if it does, you'll never get a smooch either of them. It's up to you to put an end to this bait once and for all. You suggest they decide the issue by... Hmm... Number of moment gram followers or tomb robbery contest? Maybe this one. Yes! I'm sorry, what? Yeah, moment gram? What the F is that? I'm going to throw out a guess here. Is that a social network? What the F? He spends literally every afternoon in the cafeteria just taking food pics for Moment Graham. He's just messing with you for the sake of winning this argument. Oh, that explains it. Listen to outsi outsiders like us. We don't use social networks. We use anti-social networks. Like, see this one? It's called Loner. I've got zero friends on it. Ha, huh, is that all? I've got negative one friends. Well, the last image I posted got over a thousand dislikes. Oh, yeah, well. You've totally solved nothing. You can't decide to make your... Sorry, there's a cat in front of my screen again. You clearly solve nothing. You decide to make your escape before you're caught in some kind of indie implosion. You lose minus your creativity and one charm. That's fine. Although, okay, so if that's um, money. Sure. Oh. I should be going to class the whole time. I'm just stupid. There we go. Because I'm going gremlin mode again. That day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. I should be going for that one. You spy Vera and Liam engaged in their favorite pastime, a variation of people watching called monster judging. So pathetic. Ugh, do you see what she's wearing? Newsflash, lime green stripper boots do not go with chupacabra fur. At least she made a choice. I've already seen six people wearing the same Air Gorgon sneakers. Now girls, girls, settle. We really are the lucky ones, Liam. Most people, people are just absolutely hideous. But even their hideousness is mediocre. Most people are hideous, but I have yet to see one who is the most hideous. I wonder what such an abomination would even look like. True hideousness is on the inside. In your organs, a person with their organs on their outside would be the most hideous. A toned body, symmetrical face, nice features, because traditional beauty standards are hideously mainstream. Hmm. 
Uh, I'll go top. Okay, sure, but do you know what else organs are besides hideous? Expensive. A person with their organs on the outside would basically be wa a walking bank account. The majority of the vampire's internal organs are decorative anyway, so I find this entire concept immensely uninteresting. Uninteresting? When we're, we're talking about a potential gold mine? Uh, I went with Bear, didn't I? Fudge! Why? If we could engineer people who grew organs on the outside, they'd be like living screaming money trees and enormous profits or anything but hideous. You know what is hideous? People with no understanding of financial gain, like you. Just give up. You disgust me more than the annoying pics I receive daily. Scram before I delete you like I delete all of them. Wow, that got pretty ugly. You lose. Mine's too smart someone creativity. Look, I haven't played this game in years. Cut me some slack game. Sure. Uh, okay. Thank god, avoiding the boys' table. They're a nightmare over there. You approach Liam v Vera's table to find them thoughtfully tasting several glasses of wine. This school has literally no rules, apparently. <laughs> ah, wine. That most exclusive beverage is. Even a vampire such as myself cannot resist its class and allure. You know a lot about wine, then? I'm having dinner with the King of France next week, and I could use some pointers. France doesn't have a king anymore. That's what the media wants you to think. So do you know about wine or not? Alas, in my centuries of living, I've only learned how to look good holding wine, not how to evaluate it. All I know is that I'm not drinking another glass of that one. Vera points out a ball with Polly's toilet wine run on in permanent marker. Yeah, that would explain a lot. What I wouldn't give for an experienced sommelier to help us judge which wine is best. You know nothing about wine, but you're pretty sure most sommeliers just make stuff up anyway. You suavely recommend. Try the sangria, pairs well with seafood and blood. The tannins in this robust Malbec are an elegant way to mask the taste of poison perfect for diplomatic missions. Well, this one says blood, so theoretically that'll be a Liam thing. Yes. You know, they, the pronounced sweetness and citrus flavors would go well with an unholy blood meal. I've always tried to pair Pinon... Pinot Noir with blood, you know, because noir means dark, like my soul. And I always avoided sangria because the little bits of fruit in it made it seem inauthentic. But I suppose the clue is in the title, isn't it? This really is a new dawn for sanguine cuisine. Well, not dawn per se, but let's say a new dusk. Yes, a new dusk for sanguine cuisine. Oh, we got him blushing. As someone who does not literally drink blood, I'm afraid I can't share your enthusiasm. But I do like to imagine vampires getting chunks of fruit stuck between their fangs. Liam ignores her. He's too busy gazing at you over the rim of his glass. He's a little drunk, but you don't judge. <sighs> Making some progress. Um, sure. Alright, to the classroom I go. I gotta get a little smarter here. I'm dumb as hell. That day your teacher delivers an amazing creative performance that blows your minds. Ends up being a sensation on YouTube. Your teacher gains plus 10 coolness, but who cares? He's not trying to romance your classmates. Or is he? We hope not! Oh my god, me and narrator are on the same wavelength. Oh, you also gain plus two smarts. Hooray! You're making your daily protection payment to Vera when suddenly... Everyone stop what you're doing and look at my majestic visage. The interdimensional prince, muscling in on my territory, are you? Not at all, my darling Viperess. I'm here to strictly in a business capacity. Business, you say? I'm all ears, except for my snakes, which are all tongues and teeth. It's in black economics, my love. You're an aspiring crime kingpin. I'm a prince. I propose a merger. A merger of our resources, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. That's not bad. Interesting. Oh no, Vera's getting out of her... Her calculator, if she decides this merger is financially viable, good luck asking her to prom. But how will he undermine Vera's confidence in the prince's financial status? Face all his gold with fish, steal all his money with your high frequency trading algorithm, Carl. Hmm. Well, I don't want to ask Vera to prom. I want to ask Leah. Um. What happens if I hit this one? You assemble a crack team of interdimensional criminals to heist the prince's vault. Success. You arrive back at school to find the prince dancing with glee. I'm rich. I'm rich beyond my wildest dreams. Some benevolent interloper mysteriously replaced all my useless gold with precious fish. 
Are you telling me that in your dimension fish are incredibly valuable, whereas gold is worthless? Why, of course, is that how it is everywhere? Oh, he and Miranda would make a fine couple. My god, the potential for arbitrage is... Hmm. You know, I think this is the start of a beautiful business relationship. This isn't what you want at all. At all. Miranda's probably going to wonder what happened to all her fish. She lose my two smarts and one creativity. Okay, on second thought, maybe not those two. That's fine. We didn't want to ask her anyway. Um, sure. Um, sure. <laughs> that day, you're the first one in class. You sometimes come early because you enjoy talking to the teacher. He's a bit better, but in a cool way. He treats you like an adult, and the two of you discuss life and stuff in a very snarky way. Look at you, excelling at cliched movie tropes. You gain plus two smarts, one valuable life insight that will help you face the difficulties of being young. In the middle of everything, a portal opens up and swallows Vera, Polly, and Liam. You dive in to rescue them and straight into the season finale of the Interdimensional Bachelor. Oh god. Good lord. Help, I'm in danger of spraining my eyes from rolling them so hard. Yes. Oh my god, we're on a game show? Yes, indeed. Tonight, you three will answer a series of trivial, I mean, trivia questions. Whoever gets the most points becomes my... I'm gonna win. I don't even care what the prize is. Your what? Your wife? What a revolting premise. So you're saying we're supposed to respond to a series of questions and scenarios? Our answers to which will make us more or less likely to achieve a romantic outcome with you? That's extremely problematic. I can't think of anyone who would ever want to play such a tawdry dating game. No one tell him. Everybody, stop raising reasonable concerns so I can hear the first question. I mean, Polly's got a priority, right? That's the spirit. Question number one. Describe your ideal marriage proposal, but before Polly can answer, you buzz in yourself. You have a chance to give an answer that will end the competition and send the prince packing. Hmm. John hinges, bees pour out. I present you with my grandmother's wedding ring. You still attach my naked grandmother. <laughs> oh god. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go with the bottom one. You unhinge hinge your jaw and let the bees pour out? You definitely couldn't do this back in your home dimension. Ah, stop that. You're supposed to answer with words, not bees. Ooh, he's annoyed. Probably should have specified that. Bees seem like a legitimate answer to me. What are you against avant-garde forms of expression? Words are so passe. Ah, man, I was gonna say bees. You totally stole my answer. Wait, wait, I've got it. Polly unhinges her ghostly jaw and thousands of locusts pour out. Darn, you wish you could thought of that. Locusts are way cooler. It doesn't matter, though. The prince is so busy fending off bugs, he can't focus on keeping you in, in, in his dimension. You teleport back home. You're pleased with your victory, although your throat is a little hoarse, which is ironic, because a little hoarse isn't what came out of your mouth. You gain plus your creativity in one boldest. Um, sure. Oh, God. Now I gotta deal with Liam and Miranda? Oh, fudge. You notice Liam looking disgruntled, which is his default, so whatever, but it seems like Miranda is pretty upset too. Better check it out. Liam, why are you typing on your phone so angrily? Did your phone offend you in some way? Why are you mad at it? You seem to be on 8.5 on the frowny Liam scale. The what? The frowny Liam scale. Normally I can tell how people are feeling from their faces, but you seem frowning most of the time, so I create a chart to measure your frowniness. Hi there. Miranda pulls out a notepad and displays a series of doodles of Liam's frowniness. They're not super accurate, but they are super adorable. I'm not angry at my phone. My so-called frowniness was caused by a heinous error. I specifically asked that my creature creme brulee be extra crispy so it truly popped in the massacre moment graham filter. Instead, they burn it to a crisp, rendering it unphotographable. Monsters deserve to know what they're getting into if they choose to eat at this cafeteria so they can choose to take their visitors to a different establishment. And so I'm writing a scathing whelp review. Liam, you can't do that. They shut the cafeteria down. The school kitchen staff will lose their jobs. Do you know that peasants have to do labor to make living wages? They don't simply have an unlimited store of gold. I was shocked when I first found out. Oh, Miranda, I love you. Of course you were. If the kitchen staff wanted to earn their wages, they should have been better at their jobs. I am simply the merchant of truth. No, you're the merchant of poop. Your royal sophistication so shines through. 
Look at his key. His taste may tend toward the mainstream, but surely he can see the Sapar cafeteria must be exposed. Don't be ridiculous. He is surely really more compassionate than that and would gladly help me save the cafeteria again. He's licking my hand and I'm so worried that he's gonna like nibble me. Cause he does that. He's a nibbler. Cause his little head's there. Help me save the cafeteria again. What do you mean again? Uh, again? Gosh, it's hard to keep track of your misadventures at this crap show of a school. Still, still, you'll help if you can. Miranda can't undermine Liam's admittedly talented criticism. Alone? This will take something. Okay, I'll have to... Alright. Miranda can't undermine Liam's admittedly talented criticism alone. This will take an army of homeless people. We pay to write positive welfare views of the cafeteria until we eclipse Liam's. She's, hers are very obvious, which is very nice. Liam, one lone voice, simply cannot shut down this cafeteria, at least not the voice of a high schooler. Let's get, get a renowned food critic to write a Pulitzer-worthy expose to be published in the most widely read periodicals. Excellent idea. I am an incredibly intelligent, compassionate person with tons of humility, more than enough to admit when a professional's help may be of use to me. You think you have the most humility? You shall never be as humble as I am. Every day my servants tell me I am the humblest person ever to live. Miranda storms off in a huff, leaving you and Liam to proceed with your amazing, incredible, genius plan. You're super humble, too. You use your magnificent calligraphy skills you picked up in your elective class, Calligraphy and Murder, to write five letters chock full of aesthetic. Hashtag. Liam produces a delicate white dove from his backpack. How was breathing in there? And gives it the newly addressed letters. You're not sure what's more intriguing, the fact that Liam trusts that the dove will be able to read the out addresses to deliver the letters, or the fact that the addresses he wrote down were just their emails. I'm gonna move this back a little bit. There we go, that's better. Regardless, it seems to have worked because within a multiple, within a minute of the dove's release, you receive your first reply on your phones. Oh my god, I can't read. Ah, I knew the exquisite Jax as Nevoir would have enthusiasm for our plight. That's his immediate response. Dear Liam, I received your message. Though the calligraphy is quite impressive, I'm afraid I must give you the same answer I g gave you when you asked me to write a review on the cuisine cooked by your friend's grandmother last Thanksgiving. I don't know how you got a dove to find out where I live based on my email address, but stop contacting me. Most lo mo lovingly yours, great humblest food critic, Jax as Nevoir. Okay, nobody understands the severity of the creme brulee transgression. Thank goodness we have each other. Heck yeah, you have each other for prom. Hopefully. At the very least, maybe he'll let you borrow that dove sometimes to send anthrax to your enemies. Um, sure. <laughs> I love the um, sure. So it's like smarts and creativity, I think. That day, you were astonished by the new stuff you learned in class. You thought high school was all about doing stupid crap with your friends and trying to find true love. Who would have thought that class could actually be useful? What a nice surprise. You gain plus one volleyball lesson. Good luck trying to use that in this game. And plus two smarts. You come to as if you had been knocked out or drugged or something to the sound of. Welcome back to season two of the Interdimensional Bachelor. Today's competitors are last season's flaw in the cog. Ski and an army of sexy werewolves. Hooray. <laughs> Oh, can we just, like, throw this guy back into wherever he came from? What's up, losers? For last time, <laughs> F-Bench, I'm not a werewolf. <laughs> no, but you're sexy. Take the compliment. Perhaps not, but you have a fiery temperament, wolf-like drive, and killer abs so it's close enough. He's not wrong. Not wrong. Yeah, bro, one of us, one of us, one of us. Oh god, I remember when that was a thing. Back around 2013? I thought we were going to do a sports game. Sports? Game? Sports game! We are, my dear sweet army of sexy werewolves. Hey, Keith. We are, in fact. It's time for our first round. Are you ready? 
For your first test of speed strike the skill of interdimensional badge for season two, it's time to see which of you incredible lichens can sign your name on this legally binding document that is in no way a marriage contract the fastest. You can see the werewolf's tails wagging in anticipation, ready to prove themselves fastest, bestest athlete, and Damien is cracking his knuckles, and not about to be undone. If you don't step in, at least one or two of these people are going to end up married to the prince out of sheer hyper competitiveness. Thinking quickly, you sign the name of Tyre Elliot the Terrible, the summoning him. Eat the contract. Must mm, eat that sucker. You're not getting any of them. That's this lightning. You sprint over to the table where the marriage contract sits and devour it. Oh dear, you do know what this means, right? Of course, you destroy the contract, therefore foiling the prince's screen. I'm now legally married to your stomach and lower intestines. That's fine, I have colitis. You don't want my intestines. Trust me on that. Ah, <sighs> key stomach and lower intestines are married to the interdimensional prince. Look, he's not getting any of you guys. I was determined. Good luck finding a date to prom now, nerd. Alas, marriage to specific limited internal organs. It was not what I had in mind for this plan, but I suppose it's better than the lonely bachelor life I've lived until now. Come, Key, let me kiss your stomach and make it official. I screw this. That crap is way too weird for mess effed up misadventures for the newlywed to your stomach prince can stop. Help him. Damien punches a hole through the mansion, rips it open, allows unit classmates to escape. Unfortunately, everyone is going to make fun of you until the end time for having a married stomach and you lose a lot of the respect. In this case, it translates to minus two charm and one fun. It's okay, I'm not after Damien this time. Um, sure. Okay, she's in the class, so, uh... You're outdoors, we're gym. Is it that bold? Let's go right into the auditorium. That day will rehearse for the class play. It says the muses themselves have, de have descended to give you a figurative BJ. Lovely. <laughs> oh, I knew what was in this game when I started playing it. I know. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. There it is. You find Liam storming out of the dressing room, still wearing his very fancy costume. He goes straight to Vera, where she sits in the audience, as usual, judging people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've gotta help me, Vera. Ours is in jeopardy. Help you? Please, I signed up to be a dramaturge specifically because it allowed me to criticize people without doing any real work. They look great. You may return to your calculated apathy immediately after helping me sign underground supergroup Yogurt Resort to score our play. You want Yogurt Resort to score our play? The ones who did Help Me, I'm Drowning in Trackers? I hate to admit it, but that's actually a very cool idea. The fact that someone besides me knows about Yogurt Resort only makes me slightly less excited about this plan, but should tell you how important this is to me. How are you going to pay for that, though? She's not wrong. Oh, that's exactly what the director said. Everyone's trying to smother my artistic spark beneath the boot heel of capitalism. It appears I must make some concessions to the invisible hand in the market, but I, I am to realize my dream. Yeah, I definitely want this to happen, Liam. We just have to figure out how. Have a big sale, but with cocaine instead of baked goods. Tell them we're all orphans and that this is a charity event. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the last one. You know, I really am an orphan, right? Whoops. Wow, awkward. You flee to the fire exit where you find a box marked, in case of awkwardness, break glass. You break the glass. There's nothing in the box. There's just glass in your hand now. You lose minus two charm and once marks. Oops. Um, sure. I'm just gonna be alone, aren't I, at the end? Hell no, you're weird. As you approach your chosen table, you see Liam carefully framing his artfully arranged jelly dessert for transcendent food pick when <laughs> F-O-O-D-P-I-C, ride those picks to victory. What what does that even mean? When I say food, you say pick. Food? No. Food. Stop. Two, four, picks, eight, food. Do we appreciate food picks? Food picks go. Ceases incessant chanting this instant. What? But I'm trying to help you take the best food pick. 
You've been trying to take this food pick for like 20 minutes now. You gotta snap a pic so you can eat your tasty food. I don't eat, Scott. I only ordered this food so I can take pictures of it, and you're not helping. Oh, bro. I know, I know, my cheerleading just isn't good enough. What I need is a cheer partner to take me to the next level. No, what you need is a swift kick in the... But it's too late, Scott's already chosen you as his cheer partner. Now it's up to you. What the two of you will do is... You gotta pick Liam up and toss him in the air. It's the only way to really am. But he has to fix our art, so we gotta use art to cheer him on. The quiet art of Mon. You leave Scott in a totally artistic, totally silent mime cheer that involves an invisible rope, an invisible dog sled, and an invisible hot dog bu buffet. You eventually leave Scott trapped inside a tiny box and move with Liam to another table. Thanks for saving me from that. True food photography, or as I call it, la photographie des elements cannot be rushed. I probably horribly mispronounced that. Are you sure he's okay over there in that box? You're pretty sure he's fine. You let him out at the end of lunch and he looks at your face, but most importantly, Liam tags you in his triumphant food pick. Is this for real? Um, ah, here he is. Class we go. That day you learn a ton of spells that are all as cool as they are seemingly useless. A spell to renew stickers, stickiness. A spell to turn chocolate and vanilla ice cream into vanilla and chocolate ice cream. A spell to gain plus two smarts. You actually used that last spell and you gained plus two smarts. In our class, you're having a hard time looking at the unspeakable Eldritch relic you're supposed to be painting when leaving Miranda thankfully provide you with a distraction. Why are you talking about Miranda? The relic clearly represents the futility of man's quest for, quest for meaning in a world of consumer goods. But how do you know that, Liam? To me, it just looks like a gruesome and horrific offering to a pitiless god, like Uncle Anathema used to make. Well, it's easy, Miranda. When I want to discern the true meaning of a piece of art, I simply, I simply, uh, make it, uh, look at the bottom and read the clearly printed label that explains the true meaning of the art. I'm going with the bottom. Ridiculous, there's nothing written on the bottom of... There's something written on the bottom of the statue! It says, This statue clearly represents the futility of man's quest for meaning within capitalism. Oh dear, Liam, it looks as if you were wrong. You said, In a world of consumer goods. That's merely my superior vocabulary at work, Miranda. The artist this was an eldritch sculptor, after all, not an art critic. Wow, Liam, you're so smart and so humble. Liam calmly accepts Miranda's sincere compliment, but when he thinks you're not looking, he runs around looking at the bottoms and backs of every other piece of art in the room. You can clearly change his life, probably for the better. You can, plus, you charm in whispers. I have no idea if that was good or bad. Um, sure. Um, sure. That day, the teacher is just tired of teaching, so she recurs to the classic technique of not giving a crap and putting on some kind of historical TV show for you to watch. What you don't expect is that it's super effective. God bless the golden era of television. The TV show is compelling thanks to the ridiculous amount of nudity and bloodshed, but at the same time, you actually learn a lot about history. You gain plus two smarts. You hang out afterwards to impress Liam with your sweet moment gram filters. You're really making some headway oh, when- my love. <sighs> I'm going to stab you. Never fear, bored teen. I'm here to rescue from the drudgery of high school. I suppose your heart's in the right place, but I'm afraid there's no experienced novel enough to conquer my limitless ennui. Not even marrying an interdimensional prince? Hmm? No, not even that. What about marrying an interdimensional prince ironically? Huh. My god, it's so disruptive and maybe the most disruptive thing ever. No, it seems the prince has be bewitched Liam with his idiotic proposal. All is lost unless you can think of something even more disruptive to marry. A unicorn with toilets on its head on its head or the concept of marriage itself. I'm gonna go bottom. But you can't marry marriage. Maybe you can't, but that's only because you do not possess the soul of a poet. Yes. Don't you see the brilliance of the scheme? Um, no. Marriage is monogamous. If I marry marriage, then no one else can marry. It's the most disruptive marriage of all. There we go. So long, posers. I'm off to deflower a precious social construct. This will surely put stop to the prince's practice of proposing marriage to random high schoolers. As soon as Liam figures out how to actually marry an abstract concept, meanwhile, you gain plus two creativity and plus one with smarts. Yes! 
<laughs> Ness is meowing. Alright. Oh no, not him and Damien. <laughs> when you reach Liam and Damien's table, you find an absent of food but covered in paperwork. Do we really need all these special forms? Can't we just write death threats on regular paper? The last time, Damien, a substantive change within an administrative system requires mastery of the mechanisms of bureaucracy. What if we wrote the death threats on really fancy paper? Liam turns to address you. As you can see, my master of re real politic has caused me to embrace an unlikely ally in my quest for reform. I have no idea what he's saying. I just want the cafeteria food to stop being so effing boring. You see, our interests are aligned. I too desire a menu less pedestrian. Sure, either way, we're stuck on the last bit. We know we, we know we want the menu to change, but we don't know what to change it to. Yes, we have indeed encountered a culinary block. Perhaps you can suggest something appropriately artistic. A white plate with a single sprig of parsley in the center of the essence of minimalism. A bowl of knives, the essence of knives. Well, the bottom one is Damien, and we're not going for Damien right now. We're trying to get Liam. That's it. That's it? Don't you see, Damien? It's bold commentary on the emptiness of consumption. Really? It sounds like a plate with a leaf on it. Oh, you'll never understand. No, he won't. He's too dumb. But, like, why even have a leaf on the plate if you're trying to be so minimalist? My god, you're right. Why even have a plate? Why have anything at all? That's it! Our new menu item. Nothing. The school receives Liam's petition. From now on, the lunch line will include one empty tray. A great victory for artistic expression. So we've got um, four more. Sure. To class we go. That day the teacher is just tired of teaching, so she recurs to the classic technique of not giving crap and putting us kind of historical TV show. This again. Is that super effective? Well, air television, two smarts. At the end of class, when the teacher passed back the quizzes, quizzes from last week, Liam looks at his in size. <sighs> just another Fascistic assessment in a long line of fascistic assessments. Don't get me wrong, my performance on these little charades is exceptional. I'm devastatingly intelligent, but I find the entire enterprise distasteful. Must we be weighed and measured like so much raw steak? Elroy the Swamp Monster snorts der divisively? Or derisively? Alright. <laughs> okay, I can read those. Alright, Budsucker, if you says more, how are they supposed to assess us without tests? Well, I mean, given time, I'm sure I could come up with, obviously. It's not going well for Liam. You jump in and save the day. Rap battles is only fair where a brill fight to death, or are you too chicken? Hmm. Rap battles. Yes, that's precisely what I was about to say. As we all know, one does not truly grasp a subject until one can rap fluently about it. None would dispute that Snoop Dogg is a reigning expert in the distribution and consumption of marijuana, for example. Yes, yes, very good. I'll start a petition immediately. This will definitively impress... Red... Read it? I'm re using the right red. You give Liam his first signature. You're not sure he'll get many more. In any case, you gain plus two fun, plus one creativity. Da, da, da. Yeah, we got three left. Um, sure. This is bold. I think this is charm. This, or no, this is fun. This is boldness, I think. This is charm? Let's get my charm in the positive. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain plus two charm. There we go. Get me out of the negative. You look over your shoulder to realize Liam has been staring at you for probably the last 45 minutes. He's so silent. Hey, I was just wondering if you would like to, perhaps, sit next to me in a large darkened room while silently passing judgment on a popular film? And afterwards, we could adjourn, possibly to an eating establishment, where I can watch and take artistic photos as you consume calories. Well, of course you would. You'd absolutely love to. Oh boy, are you two going on a date? What? No, what are you even doing here? Eavesdropping? What do you mean it is a date? Are you... Aren't you asking Key out to dinner in a movie? I'm not asking out anyone, and it's not a date. Dating is a cheesy, cliched artifact of heteronormative manga culture. Well, if it's not a date, what is it? Darn coach, if you can't convince Liam this is a date, he may not go out with you at all. You think fast and tell them. It's not a date, it's a date, wink. It's a performance art. Liam forgot to tell you 
we'll be wearing duck costumes the whole time. Mm, I think the bottom one. Duck costumes? Duck costumes? Well, that changes everything. It does? Sure it does. I thought you two were planning a romantic evening when really you're just trying to show your school spirit. But the school's mascot isn't a duck. Well, of course not, but you know what they say. It's not the bad mascot that matters. It's the dressing up in a hot foam rubber costume. Your aphorisms truly are the best. Thank you. But I suppose dressing up as two giant ducks would subvert expectations to a delightful degree. It's settled. Later that night, you and Liam are kicked out of a movie theater for being giant ducks. Liam writes a scathing blog post about it. It's the best not date you've ever had. You gain plus two fun and plus one smarts. Yes. Um, sure. Ah, these two again. You approach Liam and Vera at the table, but before you can sit down, Vera holds up a hand. Stop! This is a cool people table where only cool people are allowed. I would agree with what Vera just said, but agreeing is something only uncool people do. Wouldn't you agree, Vera? <sighs> nice try, Liam, but I think we're getting away from the point. This is this interloper still wants to sit with us. Well, if he wants to sit with us, he's going to have to prove he is as cool as we are. But without, like, trying to prove it, trying is so uncool. So, what's it going to be? Well, I guess I'll be going then, because there's no way anyone could ever be as cool as Liam. Let me ask you this, would an uncool person be giving Vera 50 monster dollars right now? Top one. Wait, was that sarcasm? No, of course not. He was clearly being totally sincere. There it was again. Are you two doing this on purpose? Now, why on earth would we do that? God, I can't tell whether you're being sincere or ironic. It's so, so cool. Everyone knows clear and efficient communication is the least cool thing of all. You wooed me with your open disdain for language. I can't tell if you're being serious or not. Exactly. Bear and Liam invite you to sit with them and chat. By the end of lunch, none of you has any idea what anyone else meant. So cool. Alrighty. Last class um, before prom. Sure. That day, the teacher is just tired of teaching. So she refers... And the TV again. You're packing your stuff after class when suddenly, a coach bursts in with Vera and Liam under his arms. Emergency, you two, emergency! The student is failing the killing stair class. Vera, Liam, you're the best students in that class. You've got to help him pass. Excuse me? I can't pa possibly waste my time on this. My time is valuable. You'll be receiving an invoice. See, so you're all you already agree on something. I can feel the teamwork flowing like melted butter over the lobster of success. And because motivation is the carrot and the stick of victory, I'm going to lock all four of us in this classroom until this student gives us the best killing stare in the whole school. Oh, okay, show us what you got and do it quickly, all right? You're ready to give your best killing stare. You focus as hard as you can. Um, it looks as if you're trying to poop with all your heart. Not exactly a killing stare. Okay, let's start your training. The three of you do a lot of crazy training while an inspirational song plays out, out of nowhere. It's all very motivational. After a 30 second sequence, night has already come and all of you are covered in sweat. Darn, so intense effing training sequences. Time to escape this torment. Give us a true killing stare. Unless you want to slave the rest of your days in the cocaine mines. That's right, I'll stuff a bunch of cocaine into mine and make you dig it out. Just torment you. You dig down to the bottom of your soul and bust out. It looks so fabulous it slays. An ordinary pocket watch when you choose to hypnotize Liam into liking something uncool. Hmm. I kind of want to go with the bottom one, but you may hate me for that. Um. Alright, let's go with the bottom one. You lock eyes with Liam, still oh, your mind tense your muscles and whisper, Nickelback is rad. Nickelback is rad? Liam faints. This was amazing, you hypnotized him. Come with me, I have certain associates that need persuasion. What happened? I had a weird dream that I was brain dead or something. Why are you happy? Is it over? Did you do it? Yes, we're free. This one and is a prodigy of hypnosis. We're going to do great things with you. Ah, okay. I should have went with the top one. Finally, this ordeal is over. Not sure what happened, but it felt nice. Maybe you can hypnotize me again later. Now let's focus on the important things. Repeat after me. Child labor is legal. <laughs> Somehow you're in the Philippines facing the president. You've got plus two money from Vera's profits, plus one charm. Hmm. Monster prom draws near. Who will he ask to prom? Well, we're going to ask Liam. Welcome. 
Yes. Um, sure. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. You and me? Psh. I'd rather go to prom with a bag full of garbage as my oh date. Wait, that'd be so disruptive. Thanks for the insight. Enjoy embracing eternal solitude, my friend. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a bag full of garbage to court. It's okay. You moved on from this horrible and shameful failure. You became a functional person. Eventually, you met a sweet banshee called Ash. You shared lots of common interests, and after dating for some years, you married. One day, in the middle of a casual conversation, you mentioned how you couldn't get a date for Monster Prom. Despite your years of happiness, your marriage couldn't endure such a pathetic revelation, and so Ash abandoned you the next day. I should have been going with the class from the beginning, I think. And thus you live the rest of your life alone and sad. Never forget, Monster Prom is the most important thing. Most likely to be Rasgard, the space goddess of illusion in disguise. If idiots could fly, this place would be an airport. Oh my god. Oops. So that's this run. 17 new events, 18 outcomes. Oh my god. God dang it. I messed up too much. There, some some of them are hard to get. Those six weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened and it was wonderful. After some years, the prince's dimension became a democracy, mostly due to the public discontent with royalty that spent most of its time in other dimensions. Despite that, the prince keeps on annoying high schoolers, still wrong on so many levels. Liam certain iconoclastic band that broke all conventions, the release album has been a hit, it has no songs at all, the album is actually just a banana set on fire. And be sure, Liam doesn't care if you don't get it. Damien loved fire to the very end, unfortunately that was a super legal affair and he ended up in prison for arson. Fortunately, prison was flammable. <laughs> For those six weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for monster prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. <laughs> oh, that was fun. I still have not successfully romanced a single character in this game. Because I had to accidentally go and hit the Damien thing at the very beginning as well. I also should have kept going to class from the beginning as for that one. Ugh. It's okay, we'll get someone next time. So I haven't out of the main six, I haven't done I haven't done Polly. I haven't done Scott. I think they're the only A2 that I haven't done yet. Because I've done Miranda. Oh no, Vera as well. So I haven't done Vera, I haven't done Polly, and I haven't done Scott. So I have three left that I haven't done. Yeah, I also have the um, second semester. Because I got that. Um, what is it? DLC? Expansion. You have unlocked five new images in the gallery. What have I unlocked? Show me. If I can find my mouse. Alright, let's see what I unlocked. So I unlocked five new images. Ooh. Variation. Oh, one of these days I'm gonna get one of them. Yeah, because I messed up with Miranda. Nothing new there. Oh, I got 
uh, new stuff in the more art and the fan art section. What did we get? Those are um, green for Brian, which are his. Ugh. Yeah, that's why it says second term, because I have that. All right, well, this has been Monster Prom. Maybe I'll revisit this game next Valentine's Day. We'll see. Anyway, I hope I hope everyone actually does have a good Valentine's Day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.